Uh, hello, and I am Steve Chernowski, and this is Tap Into You, a new podcast on regional issues brought to you by Tap Into Flemington Raritan, your neighborhood news online. Find us at tapinto.net. Worldwide protests triggered by the murder of George Floyd put a renewed attention on anti-racism activists and their work in 2020. Some groups had formed years ago, some more recently. In this episode of Tap Into You, we examine the work of some activists on the local level in both Hunterdon and Bucks counties. Kevin, co-founder of the Bucks County Anti-Racism Coalition, is originally from Wilmington, Delaware, and is an artist and technologist turned activist. Philomena is a steering committee member of the Hunterdon County Anti-Racism Coalition, a public school teacher, vice president of her local school board, and doctoral candidate in curriculum and teaching. And welcome to you both, and thank you for being here. Thanks for having us, Steve. So just to, to get going, I, I guess uh, for viewers and listeners, can you tell us a little bit about how your organizations came into being and how did you connect with the locals to get them involved? Uh, Philomena, we'll start with you. Sure. Um, so I'm here on behalf of the Hunterton County Anti-Racism Coalition. And in 2014, Alexa and Laura um, connected on Facebook due to a sense of urgency that um, they felt after the news broke um, that night that Darren Wilson would not be indicted for the murder of Michael Brown. Um, so they actually got coffee shortly after and started the Facebook page thinking they would get 10 people, but they got 100 people in a few days and then they formed an advisory group, new members joined, they started meeting, and now the page has increased to about 1,000 members um, since that time and the nature of the meetings have changed. They started out as events and now they're actually more um, discussion-based, very, very heavy theory. Um, and as it stands, we host monthly meetings and we use Facebook to engage with locals. Uh, we also have an email distribution list that's maintained by volunteers. And it's just for going back in history, recent history, 2014 is Staten Island is after Ferguson. If, is that correct? Yes. So, yeah, th that's coming up in 2014, right at the end of the year. And uh, um, Kevin, how about you? How did uh, your group in Bucks County, Pennsylvania get started? Um, well, we had our start this year, actually, um, uh, just uh, prior to the, the uh, Floyd murder. Um, I believe my, my co-lead, um, whose name is Molly, uh, started a Facebook group. I, I believe it was around Breonna Taylor. Okay. Um, and then George Floyd kind of kicked things into, into, um, into the spotlight for the, the then, you know, it was a tiny group, maybe less than 100 people in that group. Um, so they started to gain some traction after Floyd, and she needed help um, leading the group and, and adminning that Facebook group. And I was just a member at that point. I wasn't, you know, active in the group. And she reached out to me. Um, I, I should um, let, let your listeners know that I am, I am a person of color. I'm a black man. So she reached out to me and said, hey, are you interested in helping me, you know, steer this group? And I said, yeah, of course I am. You know, it's the least I can do. Um, so that was at the beginning of the summer. And throughout the summer, we were mainly an educational group, um, sharing articles, information on how to be anti-racist. Her goal with the group was to um, to get uh, people in Bucks County, which is you know, it, it is not all that diverse, um, to kind of uh, show them how how to be allies and how to be anti-racist. So throughout the summer, we were just focused mainly on education. Um, in September. Uh, something happened locally here in our town that uh, it was a blatant example of, of outright racism um, that became very public very quickly. Um, and we asked the members, do we want to take action on this? And they said, absolutely. So we took action. Um, it got press. It drew the attention of you know, press locally, countywide, even up to the national level. Um, it drew the attention of some neighboring groups like the one Philomena uh, uh, helps lead. Um, they came out to to protest with us and voice their support. So in a short period of time, we went from having only if like less than 100 members. We're we're now pushing 700 people in the span of you know most of those people have joined in the span of the, the past three months, um, and that momentum carried into the election cycle as well. So now we were putting into practice some of the theories we were 
helping to inform people about. So can you tell uh, uh, people about uh, some of the goals that your groups have done? Uh, you know, um, Kevin mentioned protests, um, and, and I'm pretty sure that had to do with the breakfast place in New Hope, if I'm correct. Um, that is and, correct. And, yeah, and and um, so like, what, what are some of the, besides organizing protests? What what are some past accomplishments? What are some goals looking forward to that that have happened and looking forward to the future as well? And uh, I'll start with uh, Kevin. Go ahead. Um, well, we we are a new group, as I said. So you know, aside from the the protests um, here locally, and, and which were ongoing until um, the pandemic kind of put a damper on that. Um, we have been looking for um, and, and, and accomplishing um, getting involved with the local school board um, and, and they have a new platform that we are um, heavily interested in influencing around anti-racism um, that was brought on by their student body. Um, so uh, we're looking at, um, we are already on the, the, the uh, anti-racism coalition for, for the New, uh, New Hope uh, Solberry School District um, at interacting directly with, you know, the, the principal and superintendent there um, to try to help bring diversity and, and information around race and, and um, ethnicity into the school. Um, the other thing we're doing is we're going around garnering support from local businesses um, and, you know, showing them how they can help support the effort as well. Um, one thing that that um, I've been talking very closely to Philly uh, lately, uh, Philomena lately, is um, uh, we're we're starting to talk about how we can um, both groups can help each other start mutual aid efforts. Um, so, like I said, we're a new group, and we are just kind of finding our feet and learning how to do this, um, teaching others how to do the work, and learning how to best do it ourselves. No, oh, thank you. And then before I go to, to Philomena on this, the same question is, I mean, Bucks County and Hunterdon, I mean, yeah, you, you, you Buc Bucks County is more diverse than Hunterdon County, right? Like, I mean, if we're looking <laughs> at it, I, I, you could say Bucks is probably a little more like Mercer across the river in that respect. But uh, Philomena, what, what are some of the things that your group has done in the past here in Hunterdon County? Um, I just want to say, Kevin, I feel like you're being modest because you guys have done so much in the short amount of time that you've worked. Like you guys got national attention for the work that you did as well. Um, a lot of press on that event um, and that ongoing action. So, and also like the work that the kids did at the at New Hope um, Solberry High School, the testimonies they provided um, regarding their experiences became a model for um, activist groups around Hunterdon County. So they started gathering testimonies as a result of that. So a lot of really influential work. Um, but in terms of our goals, um, our main goal is to raise awareness and encourage mainly white people in particular to develop an anti-racist mindset and to take action um, with that anti-racist mindset. Um, and I feel like our proudest accomplishments are the fact that we have maintained momentum for so long um, and become like a real landing page or an entry point for people to um, start an anti-racist journey um, and then obviously take action too, because it doesn't end with just the work you do yourself. Um, but we've been so proud of what has come as a result of the group, like again, as a landing page or an entry point I would say um, many of our members um, are working in incarceration issues around Hunterdon County, particularly at Edna Mahan. And also our partners are working to um, improve the school curricula around the county and policies too. Um, and we actually have members who started running for office, board of ed, council, and won this year. We had a lot of members win. Uh, we don't we don't run their campaigns, but they were just inspired to work from within the system, which we thought was fantastic. And obviously we've been doing book discussion groups, events, film screenings um, throughout the years, but really proud of the fact that we've become like an entry point for people to take up, you know, activism in other ways too. Yeah, well, I, I do want to talk about the education because, you know, that that's kind of, it seems like, an, I guess it, in this environment, it seems like a somewhat easy change. I mean, if, if at, the, at our local school districts, Filomena, there was a, a, a an elective on 
on the agenda and approved, you know, it really quickly. And, and, and we've had one where I, I worked for, you know, many years. And it seems like this is happening across school boards, you know, across New Jersey. I don't, I don't know about Pennsylvania, but it sounds like even in Pennsylvania, this is happening. And so it seems like some very tangible uh, results coming from these efforts. Um, so I guess, you know, on the other hand of that, how do you like uh, engage skeptical locals who might believe you're favoring certain groups over others? Um, well, this, this, uh, this is a very complicated question because there are different type of, types of skeptics I've found. Um, so um, while I, I, I don't like to tell people how to do their activism, um, I do try to set an example, especially with, with people who oppose um, what I consider to be essential anti-racist views. Um, I'm black, so I've been, I've had plenty of practice, uh, a, a lifetime of practice, you might say, on, on, on dealing with this. Um, I, and I was raised in a mostly white environment growing up, you know, in, in, in suburban Wilmington. Um, so I find that there are different kinds of people. There are people who are skeptics because um, they don't, they might not know any better or, or, or they might come at it with, with, with a, with, not a sense of hostility, but, but just ignorance and, and, and a willingness to learn, right? So when you encounter someone like that, you know, you try to reach out to them. Um, I, I've done this in the group already, sharing articles with people, encouraging them to ask questions, um, reminding them that not everybody's going to get it right, quote unquote, the first time. A lot of people are scared to try for fear of not getting it right or doing the wrong thing. And I'm like, you know what? That's okay. You can, you can, try and do the wrong thing. And if you see that you're doing the wrong thing, you can do better if you want to. Um, but don't be afraid to try change in order, you know, don't let that stop you from trying. Um, I've even bought books for people who didn't have the means, you know, to buy books on anti-racism, you know, in, in, the, in, the, in an extreme case. Um, but it, it's not very hard and it doesn't take much time to tell those types of people from the people who should know better and choose to remain ignorant. So one of the things that I think is most important is to be present, to, to be a, a, a counter example. You're not, you're not gonna reach everybody with a protest. You're not gonna reach everybody in the moment, right? It, it takes continued sustained visibility and a continued push. Um, and then there are the um, outright hostile people and I hard ignore those people. Those people all, most often when I'm confronted with someone like that, they want a reaction. I don't give it to them. And I encourage people um, who protest and who, who engage in activism with me to do that as well. Filomena, what do you think? How do you, uh, in Hunterdon County, um, you know, do, do the same to engage with? And I like that. I like, really like, you know, I, I wrote that down because I, I want to delve a little more into that. ignorance versus hostility versus the outright, just the people who are never going to change their minds. Mm -hmm. um, Philomena, how do you deal with uh, people that, that think you're, you know, on the wrong side of an issue or something? Yeah, I mean, I really agree with what a lot of Kevin said. Uh, you some you kind of have to decide where your energy is best used to. And if there's some people who you just know you're never going to meet, see eye to eye with, and it's they're just in it to suck your energy out and not necessarily open to growth, then those are people you walk away from, whether it's in person or on a Facebook thread, right? When you have those discussions on Facebook too, because mm -hmm. um, your energy can be better used in a more productive way. And then the other thing I think about is when, and this is something my friend Marissa taught me, is when you're facing someone and they are coming at an issue from a different point of view, you think about like any trauma that they might have in, experienced and are informing um, their perspective. And I thought that was really interesting. She actually makes cranes, um, like these peaceful cranes that she hands to people to just kind of center people in the moment in a situation where she's having a confrontation and then starts to ask them about their day. How are they doing? And it's just like bringing, um, bringing people back to the human side of things instead of, oh, we have to fight and we have to disagree and you believe this and making things so divisive. It's like, well, thinking, how can we connect to work towards a common goal? 
I 100% yeah, no. agree with that, um, Philly, because um, part of the goal of this work is to get people to see the humanity in everyone, right? And and sometimes they also want to be seen. And it, it, it's tough to reach out to people who hold such different views, but they are human too. And, and, and it, when you can make that connection, it does make a huge difference. Yeah. And I have to add, as a white person, we are easy to turn our backs on other white people who are not doing the work. But actually, we have a I believe an added responsibility as white people to confront other white people and really try to meet them because like too much of the work is put on persons of color to educate white people of the you know experiences they're having or anything like that. So I think there's an extra responsibility for white people to talk to white people and to try to not not turn their back and not give away. Put in the time and work hard, you know, like don't just give up. That's a privilege or a luxury to just give up. Absolutely. And you can start with your relatives if you have those relatives. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And you guys mentioned systemic, you know, racism, you know, and, and I, you know, had found out more about my local town when I, when I read a book, and that's my, what I, what I went and want my next question to be on, is I, I read a book called The New Suburbanites that was published in 1980, and I found out that the kids I was going to school with were out, this this is why they could only live in the three neighborhoods they lived in is because mm -hmm. they were redlined pretty much at that time and and, and i and, you know, and then i'm looking at wow this was this was a whole system bigger than just me growing up in my high school and can you can you talk about books that you think to get to more of you know helping curb some of those systemic issues that are still in our system that pe that readers sorry i should say viewers and listeners should uh should look at um, we, uh, our group hosts a monthly um, book discussion group, and we are going through some of the fundamentals um, right now. We're doing How to Be an Anti-Racist by Ibram Max Kendi. We did Cast by Isabel Wilkerson. Um, there's talks about a bunch of other books um, that we plan on doing, you know, too many books, not enough time kind of problem, which is a good problem to have. Um, but I would say you know, learning what anti-racism is, learning how it's different from saying um, that you're not a racist and, and learning that there's I read no, that such, on your blog. <laughs> no such thing. Yeah, I, I wrote an article on that. There's no such thing as not racist, right? You're, yep. um, so um, you choose a side and, and, and knowing that that's what needs to be done first and foremost and, and how to do that. And then, you know, and I'll, I'll let uh, Philly as, as an educator, she probably has uh, many more recommendations than I do, but, um, then once you have the fundamentals down, I think it behooves you to go into some more specific categorized um, criminal justice uh, reform, um, mm -hmm. that sort of things, immigration policy, you know? So um, yeah, there, there, there's plenty to choose from. Dilemena? Well, one of our steering committer, com committee members, Karen Gaffney, wrote a book um, that I'd like to put a plug in for because I think it's a really helpful introduction. It's called Dismantling the Racism Machine, and it's accessible, it's interdisciplinary, it includes tools for action aimed at students, educators, and the general public. Um, but what I love about it is it brings you from that individual level to the systems level. And she actually uses the picture of a machine to kind of help you understand that racism is bigger than just, um, you know, being anti-racist doesn't mean I'm going to be kind to everyone or I'm going to be nice to everyone. It's actually talking about tackling bigger systems. Yeah, I read, I read something uh, earlier today that, that kind of piqued my interest. Um, some, an, uh, an, article mentioned toxic individuality or toxic individualism. And I think we're there now, you know, especially with, you know, the anti-masking and all, all this stuff. Um, but yeah, being an individual doesn't free you from involvement and your, your stake in a society and, and, and the policies that are in that society and, and, and the outcomes of those policies. Um, nothing exists in a vacuum. You know, you, you as an individual have an effect and, and therefore you have a responsibility to make sure that your effect is one that is, you know, considering other people, you know, and, and this is at the core of anti-racism. This is at the core of, of um, stemming this pandemic through social distancing and masking, for example. It's, it's really um, 
I, I have heard it said that, you know, what we're really trying to teach here is empathy. You know, we, 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 we and how do you do, how do you best do that? You won't have a foster people to, to, to want to have a sense of empathy for their fellow man, whether they are brown or black or, or Latinx or, you know, um, trans or, or queer or a woman, you know, it's, it's about, it's about fostering empathy and, and like Philly said, realize how what you are doing and benefiting from in a passive way is contributing or not contributing to their well-being. I, I like that. Like empathy, like it, it's about closing our blind spots, is it not? Or trying to understand, you know, w what we miss and, and trying to realize just that we have them and then trying to maybe put ourselves in our neighbor's shoes to the best of our abilities, I think is what you're saying. Sure. Um, we become so disconnected from um, like where our clothes are made, right? Think about uh, this, the journey of your clothes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, think about the like how things get to you in your life. We're so disconnected from the story of how, of the things around us, and there's people behind all like the people that made the clothes and the people that built the house and the, like when you think about things like that, when you connect the people to the things around you, you recognize how some people are like benefiting from exploitation of other people. Yeah, Nick Nick Kristoff has written great stuff in the past on you know the sweatshops and, and all around the world and how they get to us. Um, no, and then and then the other stuff like e even the Amazon worker in Robbinsville. Like I remember that article mm -hmm. came up. The Amazon plant shut down in Robbinsville. That pl probably affects a lot of our uh, local people's holiday plans. And yet I've never been in it. It might as well be in in Florida as far as sure. I'm concerned. You know. Um, but so I guess, you know, Joey wanted to, to add this in and and um, vis-a-vis like, you know, your, your anti-racism efforts, have, has there been any engagements with other communities of color, like the Latin community, the Latino community in, in any of your counties? Um, yeah, so we partner with organizations that um, work more directly with undocumented residents. Um, like our last meeting um, focused on mutual aid where we invited speakers from Central Jersey and Princeton mutual aid, which is direct giving. Um, basically the concept of mutual aid is um, you wanna in a time of crisis like our current time where the systems in place cannot meet the needs of individuals, you actually wanna create an alternative structure that can meet their needs through direct giving um, where the nonprofits, you know, aren't able to meet the needs or maybe you want to cut out the overhead or the middleman of the nonprofits and you can build strong communities through these alternative means. So Jersey, Central Jersey and Princeton Mutual Aid are partners that we work with that um, directly support undocumented residents. But we have, I think you said persons of color, we do have, um, we have Black members of the Henderson Anti-Racism Coalition. Um, and we also have uh, Latinx members of the Henderson Anti-Racism Coalition. Like we know Latinx community is like not a monolith, right? Like, right. but in terms of like right. undocumented residents, I could say that Central Jersey and Princeton Mutual Aid would be our partners. Is there uh, anything else that you would like to say f to uh, viewers and listeners, uh, like especially where to find you online and uh, any contact information? Uh, Philomena, you can go ahead. Um, so you can, we mostly work on Facebook, so you can look for the Hunterton County Anti-Racism Coalition Facebook page. We also have a website if you Google our name. And um, I just want to thank you for having us to talk about this um, important issue of racism and inviting us to talk about our experiences as activists working on it. So thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you very much for this. Um, I appreciate it. And, and I, I appreciate being on with uh, Philly as well. Um, she's been great to work with uh, and looking forward to doing more with the Hunter and Arc group, um, as well as a lot of the other groups. We can be found at Bucks Arc, that's B U C K S A R C dot org. And that has links to our Facebook pages. Um, we do have a vetting process that we ask members to go through. And, um, you know, once you're approved, you'll, you can join in the discussion and learn how to get involved. 
Thank you both again. And again, this has been, uh, I'm Steve Chernosky, and this has been Tap Into You, a new podcast on regional issues brought to you by Tap Into Flemington Raritan, your neighborhood news online. Find us at tapinto.net. My guests have been Kevin of the Bucks County Anti-Racism Coalition and Philo Mena of the Hunterdon County Anti-Racism Coalition. To the both of you, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Thanks again for having us.